Namaste everyone. I welcome all of you in today's session of experience of divinity through excellence. And today we have with us Dr. Subramanyam. Fondly we call him Subhu Bhaiya. So I welcome him uh, and I request him to come on the screen. Hello Bhaiya. Hope you're good. <laughs> So, Thank you. Uh, before, nice yeah. to be with you all. <laughs> so, before starting the session, I will quickly uh, uh, give you introduction about myself because I can see many of the new faces today. I am Ketki Gokhale. Uh, I am based in Solihull, UK, and uh, I am founder of Atman Yoga Consultancy. That's my company and through uh, Atman Yoga Consultancy, I run various yoga programs like uh, uh, women's yoga, yoga for women's health, yoga therapy for back and spinal health, Vedic chanting courses, level one, two and three. And uh, divine chants, as uh, many of you have joined this WhatsApp group. So uh, during COVID time, we started this activity. We started with uh, Dasha Shanti mantras. So we learned how to chant these mantras in Vedic style, going through various Vedic chanting rules. And after that, we started with Bhagavad Gita chanting. So, so far we have covered uh, shlokas from Bhagavad Gita related to Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Raja Yoga and Vibhuti Yoga. At the end of each topic, we used to, in, well, means we started inviting uh, many uh, masters and scholars from field of yoga to talk on that topic. And today we have Dr. Subramanyam Bhaiya to talk on Vibhuti Yoga. So now I briefly introduce him. Subha Bhaiya is director of Adhyatma Yoga Academy in Bangalore. He has done masters in yoga from S. Vyasa uh, University and doctorate in yoga spirituality at Hindu University of America from Florida. He is disciple of Swami Atmasthananda Maharaj of Ramakrishna Mission. He is fortunate to serve and work closely with many yoga scholars and spiritual masters like Swami Dayananda Saraswati. He served as a convener of the global meet of all legendary yoga grandmasters in December 2013 at Bangalore, where the declaration to opt 21st June as International Day of Yoga was collectively taken. He is coordinator for Stop Diabetes Movement, a nationwide health project to mitigate diabetes through yoga therapy. He has been moderating a popular interview called as Kapi with Yogi, where he invites many uh, yoga professionals in the field uh, of yoga and yoga therapy. He was rewarded with title Yoga Ratna by educationist Dr. Gururaj Karajgi uh, on International Yoga Day in 2016. So I think his list of work and titles are so many, which gives us the idea of his extensive work in field of yoga and thousands of people from all ages and all walks of life are benefiting immensely. So now we are lucky to have him today with us and listen to him on Vibhuti Yoga. So now I request Subhu Bhaiya to start with his talk. Namaste. Namaste. It's a privilege for me to meet you all and talk with all of you. Of course, I apologize for getting it postponed by a week's time due to some other emergency. And uh, Ketkiji has been my senior at SVASA, one bad senior to us, they've all been there. And of course, we haven't um, met much or interacted, but now the whole world has come together after this technology has developed. So we have been fortunate to get to learn from far and wide. The Veda, Rigveda says, Ano Badraha Kratavo Yento Vishwataha. 
that all noble thoughts come from all corners of the world that's what after this pandemic we are seeing though we had a lot of difficult times but from all this difficult times also something good is happening that we are becoming a literally a global family that we are able to come together and then learn together using the media of the technology and that's what in fact i would say this chapter of geeta itself is teaching us we'll see how and all those let's begin with a uh, prarthana to yogeshwara bhagwan shri krishna whose words of wisdom whose divine poem the bhagavad gita that we are contemplating upon so from wherever you are maybe you can just keep your eyes closed and try to bring in the midst of your heart the visualization of yogeshwara lord shri krishna the profounder the teacher of this yogic wisdom of gita the bhagavad gita just as he stands straight with his hand and chin mudra with his benevolent face and arjuna with complete surrender is sitting in front of him listening to his divine words with the background of the ratha the chariot and the warfare of kurukshetra so this geeta charya krishna that we meditate upon vasudev sutam devam tam sacha anuramardhanam devaki paramanandam krishnam vande jagadgurum parthasya saratim devam shokamoha nivarakam dharma yuddajaye hetum krishnam vande jagadgurum yoganishtam stiram devam karm jnana subhaktidam samatva sahitam shantam krishnam vande jagadgurum krishnam vande jagadgurum stapakaya ca dharmasya sarvadharmaswarupine avatar varishtaya ramakrishnaya te namaha namashriyati rajaya vivekananda suraye sache sukha swarupaya swamine tapaharine swamine tapaharine shri gurubhyo namaha hari hi om namaste and welcome you all once again for this session today i'm glad that you all learned the shlokas of the vibhuti yoga in detail then here we are here today to interact and to share some connected thoughts with this beautiful chapter where we see krishna giving us wonderful way of getting connected to the divine as we all know as swami vivekananda says that each soul is potentially divine the goal of life is to manifest the divinity and he had given us the four major paths of yoga as you all have seen so far do it either by work that's karma yoga worship the bhakti yoga philosophy the gyana yoga psychic control the raja yoga by one or more or all of this and then to be free controlling nature internal and external so this is the ultimate structure of our spiritual wisdom and yoga so we all know that yes the divinity is there in each one of us but how do we bring it out how do we experience it arjuna himself who had 
learnt all this he is not in no way inferior he had such wonderful yogic wisdom the vedic wisdom and also the wisdom of the material world was so great in his war skills and very brilliant and war was not so new to him so he had so had all these learnings and we all know in the beginning of the kurukshetra war he couldn't bring it all into application he couldn't bring it all into implementation that's where krishna rises to the occasion to teach him the path of yoga and prepares him for this task before him it also happens to all of us sometimes we know what to do but we are not in a position to do or we are getting stuck between doing and not doing and knowing and applying in such situation all of us would really be put upon and therefore there is an arjuna in each one of us and krishna slowly prepares us arjuna not only that arjuna of the kurukshetra this arjuna in us is also getting prepared slowly through the chapter wise arrangement in the gita the very first chapter itself you see that arjuna is in vishada he is in distress and from there krishna brings him the wisdom the gyana yoga and slowly prepares him one by one and when he comes to the eighth chapter he talks about the imperishable form of the brahman because krishna wants arjuna to learn knowing that which everything else is known attaining that which everything else is attained that is the divine knowledge know one's own self and one's connectivity with the divine that we are atma swarupa we are not this body we are atma swarupa and there is the supreme ultimate reality the paramatma and then there is a unbreakable connection between this jivatma and paramatma this is all about spirituality this is all about yoga if only we know that we are not this limited body and limitless atma swarupa limitless divine conscious being and then there is that supreme consciousness which is there which is all pervasive and this entity in us is part and parcel of that supreme all pervasive reality just like the wave and the ocean this is what we need to understand ultimately that we are all made of that chaitanya that consciousness and not different from him so having getting to know the supreme paramarthika gyana then the vyavaharika how to fight the battle of this kurukshetra or how to face the battle of life or how the past 3 years we have been fighting the battle of this pandemic so krishna is slowly preparing arjuna and arjuna in us as well and so he had been telling about the imperishable supreme reality the akshara brahman and then he goes how to attain the akshara brahman through the path of the devotion the bhakti yoga in the ninth chapter where he says it is raja vidya but raja guhyam raja vidya it is the royal knowledge royal path of wisdom wisdom is what vidya is what ya vidya sa vimuchyate education is that which which can liberate you and not bind you into bondages that supreme knowledge of knowing again this connection between jivatma and paramatma and attaining him through the easiest way of the bhakti is what is spoken in the ninth chapter and but he krishna says this is not easily attainable by everybody though it is very easy but the easy thing you know it's not easily taken by everybody that's what it happens always people struggle a lot trying hard to do something whereas what they are trying to do will be very easily available at their hand stretch but they won't be realizing its greatness so it becomes a secret raja kuhyam the path of bhakti by surrendering to the divine so in in the 8th and 9th chapters we see krishna giving arjuna to understand that he is omnipresent omnipotent all pervasive all that we see as the veda says isha vasamitakum sarvam yatkinja jagatyam jagat 
He was telling that I am there as the Atma in each and every being that what is seen here around. Aham Atma Guda Kesha. Though Krishna was telling this, Arjuna was not able to comprehend that. He was not in a mindset to comprehend and understand this all pervasive reality. And so, Krishna has to slowly prepare him. He understood the level where Arjuna stays now. Right? Though he knew this all before, but in the current fair, the current status of Arjuna in the warfare, he was not able to bring all those and apply there. He was in the conflict. And so now Krishna has to prepare him one step at a time. So understanding the limitation of the student Arjuna, that's what a good teacher should do. Not that all, this is what I want to teach, this is all the syllabus, just like that cover and go should not be the mentality of the teacher. You should understand where the student stays at this point of time, at every class. The student may not be the same as what he was yesterday. His mood could be changed, his mind could be different. His environment from where he comes from matters. And what is happening in the current affairs today matters. So quite a lot has to be considered by the teacher. And Sri Krishna, considering all those, understands the limitation of Arjuna, that he is not in a position to comprehend this all-pervasive reality, that formless Vishwarupa of Krishna. And therefore, he had to slowly prepare him towards that. And that is where he takes the tool of this wonderful yoga called the Vibhuti Yoga. By then, already he had introduced the Jnana Yoga, the Sankhya Yoga. He had introduced to him the Dhyana Yoga in the sixth chapter. Karma Yoga has also already been introduced. And the seventh Sankhya Yoga had also been introduced. And then he comes to uh, the Akshara Brahma Yoga. In the eighth, the Raja Vidya, all those has been tried. But then understanding that Arjuna is struck somewhere, he need to now open this gate where he has been struck and then make him to understand this all-pervasive reality. To have the supreme divine knowledge. So now Krishna takes the tool of this Vibhuti Yoga. Where he tries to give him some samples, picks him some, picks some samples. In fact, I had told that they are the excellence, but not only the excellent things have been taken. Because now Arjuna has to be in a Samatva Chitta. As we know, Samatvam Yoga Uchyate, the equilibrium is very important in yoga. With this equilibrium, he had to fight, not with enmity or animosity, with the balance to state the equilibrium, imagine that in, in our, our war, our soldiers in the borders were fighting. Yes, they know that this is an enemy country from where this person has come to attack us. So that enmity should also be there in the Vyavaharika. But only that he keeps in mind that he may not be able to focus and do the proper justice to the war. So in the Paramarthika, in the higher sense that he has to have that balance, the equanimity of mind, the equilibrium of mind, that Samatvam Yoga Vuchyate. Or the inner layer and having the you know the goal of this particular war that the, the enmity in the vyavaharika the transactional level so this is how krishna prepares arjuna now so he has to tell him that it is he who is present first of all the problem is arjuna is he is having the katrutva bhava that i am doing he has to understand that you are the nimitta matram bhagavan divine divinity has an order a role for all of us to play and they're all instruments being used to make this role to happen so this is the greatest lesson again krishna gives in the gita so father to understand that it is god who is present everywhere it is he who is making everything to happen this higher ideal has to be set and for that now krishna takes the tool of this vibhuti yoga a beautiful chapter with around 42 shlokas Vibhuti, when we say, uh, people think in South, we, we apply this Vibhuti on the face. That's the Basma, the ashes. The, gently when we go to Shiva's temple, you will see the Basma being given. We call it also as Vibhuti. In fact, that is also connected to this because it's also a Mahima of Bhagavan, the Vibhuti also. It also is indicating the glory of the divine. 
I will not go into that details now. But then that is why it is also called as Vibhuti. We see in Patanjali Yoga Sutra, the third chapter in the Patanjali Yoga Sutra being called as Vibhuti Pada. It's a Pada is a quarter there, a chapter there. So Samadhi Pada, Sadhana Pada, Vibhuti Pada, and then the Kaivalya Pada. There also the word Vibhuti is used where it means again the glory. The manifestation of the glories where in the third chapter of Patanjali Yoga Sutra we see the manifestation of the Siddhis or various Samyamas being used. And here in this context, there those Vibhudis in the Patanjali Yoga Sutra are attainable by a Sadaka by his practice of Samyama. Trayam Ekatra Samyama, the Dharana Dhyana Samadhi phase, the last three phase of the Ashtanga Yoga. Inter, inter, uh, interconnected with each other together when it's practiced as a sadhana, it gives a samyama through which you can attain the ashtama siddhis, anima, lagima, the ashtama siddhis, and it is an attainable siddhi which is vibhuti, it's given there. Whereas here, what we see is not that which is attainable by an ordinary person or by the sadhaka or by the devotee like Arjuna. But it is to make us to see the presence of the divinity in everything that we see around. Good and bad. Krishna doesn't say that he is the good alone. He brings us to know that he is behind both the good and bad happening. That's why the Indian outlook, you know, the, the, the yogic outlook, even to the, the situation like pandemic, what we had. We did not go on to curse anybody for it. Look at immediately the spiritual way in which India or the Indian context, the philosophical context, no matter wherever you would be, you could be in UK or you could be in you know, uh, USA or wherever it could be, the, the yogi context. I'm not telling this the country is something because India has given this depth of spiritual wisdom. So I, I, I just mentioned as India, but you know, no matter from wherever you are, but this, when you understand this yogic perspective of understanding, so we have a different understanding that it's all, first of all, we understand that there is a reason for all this to happen. We may not understand the reason, but we know for sure that there is a reason. And we connect the reason to the divinity. In an individual level, we connect it to our own karmic reasons, the karma which is making me to suffer from this. Or the karma, again, the good karmas that we have, the good prarabdha that we have is making us to be free from this and enjoy the benefits of it. So both the ends are happening because of one's own karma in the individual level. And we, we have a collective cosmic karma which is there, which the divine is making it to happen. And when such bigger things like this pandemic happens, it is the cosmic karma which is making it all to happen. So for this to understand, for Arjuna to understand this, for us to understand this, Krishna, through the tool of making us to go by select selective objects of excellence he is showing here excellence not only in the good even in the bad right if, if you see sometimes i would admire recently you know we have been uh, discussing about the kashmir files the movie so terrorism and all those things we have been seeing I, and then recently there is a, um, a television show which was pre-telecasted aapki adalat or something where the, the main culprit, a terrorist who had been in reason for this whole Kashmir attacks has been interviewed by the television channel. I don't know which television it is, this program in which Apki Adalat has been interviewed. And look at this person sitting there, one who has killed so many people. But sitting there, he had a better language. His communication was so good. He was technically well aware. He had all acute knowledge of what is all happening and then but still of course he had his own uh, ignorance and animosity and all those things which was there i'm not trying to justify him but saying that that even in such people right there is something that we need to see what is i would not say what is that which is good in them but a skillfulness in them is there 
So this is what Krishna is telling us to see with an open mind with everything in the world as such. So at the beginning of the chapter, he is giving the list of wonderful values in the fourth and fifth shloka, saying that all this good values, virtue, virtues have all come out from him only. Buddhihi, Jnanaha, Asammoha, Shama, Satyaha, Damaha, Shamaha, Sukha and Dukha. See here, he is not saying that Sukha only, the good, good is only from him. He says also Dukkha also. Even Bhaya, Abhaya, all. Bhaya is the fear and to be fearless. Both. All these are coming from him only. And praise and also disgrace. All are coming from him. So we need to have a balanced state to look into all this is what Krishna probably prepares. Arjuna. And then he says about this wonderful Vibhuti Yoga. In the seventh shloka, he says, Etam Vibhutim Yogam Cha Mamayo Veti Tatvataha Yovi Kampena Yogena Yujjate Natra Samshayaha. Very beautifully, those words are used here. We know that Yujjate Anene Iti Yogaha. The definition of yoga, we say Yujjate Anene Iti Yogaha. Yoga is that which brings this beautiful union, the binding here. And one who has cognized or understood the supreme yoga of the Vibhuti Yoga, understanding the excellence in all these aspects of creation that we see around. And seeing this yoga, yoga again is union. The union through appreciating the excellence is Vibhuti Yoga. One who is established in that so he gets firmly established in the higher divinity and there is no doubt about it. So Krishna by giving his assurance goes on again to describe how a person who was understood will be like in the 12th chapter in the Bhakti Yoga also we see Krishna giving the characteristic features of a true devotee. Advesta, Sarvabhutana, Maitra Karunevacha all those he gives there to tell about how a true devotee would be one who has understood the aspects of devotion very well. Krishna goes on to tell that. The similar way here also he is giving in the beginning itself telling the Lakshana of what happens to a person who has understood the Svibhuti Yoga and applied it properly in his life. So he says, one who has understood, he is present everywhere. Right? How would such person be? He would be always thinking of him. Machittaha, Madgata Pranaha, Bodayanta Parasparam. In fact, they keep talking to each other the, the glory, the appreciation of the glory in all that we see around. Right? That's what true devotees do. Whenever you see something good in somebody, immediately you talk to the like minded people. Come on, look at this. Is it not so good? That's what among friends, among peers, or among co sadakas we, we uh, discuss. Bodhayanta Parasparam. So they talk each other, not just about the Lord, but seeing the Lord's presence everywhere and through which every time, it's not just sometime it happens, always Nityam, Tushyanticha, Ramanticha. They are always in that happy state because of appreciating, appreciating the divinity everywhere. This is very important. In fact, the shloka gives you the means for happiness. How you have to ex experience happiness today. A lot of people are talking about happiness. So how do you attain this happiness? Krishna clearly says yes, here that when you appreciate the divinity, when you appreciate the divinity in everything around you, Tushyanti, Ramanticha, so you can be happy. Santushta Satatam Yogi. A yogi is always happy. How? By appreciating the presence of divinity everywhere. So to such person that he says, I am giving them the, the Vibhuti Yoga here again. He is calling another term here called Buddhi Yoga. Both are synonymous we can take because to appreciate this excellence all around and then to 
look at the divinity there in everything right both the good and bad in a samach samachitta for that we we require a balanced state of the intellect that is buddhi yoga so again the path of yoga here called buddhi yoga through which vibhuti yoga is attainable this is a means buddhi yogam is a means and vibhuti yoga is that which is attained through that is given by krishna here so these two terms of buddhi yoga and vibhuti yoga we see here and he says it is it is given to you because of my kripa my anukampa esha meva anukampartham it is obtained because of his anukampa anukampa here is the kripa or the karuna the grace because of which he is given and as a result of it what happens what happens because of this vibhuti yoga by applying the buddhi yoga and experiencing the vibhuti yoga of appreciation appreciating the divine presence everywhere what is the result of it what happens jnana deepena basvatah it it you know takes away the agnana agnana nashana happens the agnana that we are limited to our own limitations goes away and then the jnana deepa the light of knowledge dawns the light of wisdom dawns through which you are able to see the divinity everywhere after telling this krishna gives a chance to arjuna to speak where arjuna after praising krishna praising in krishna, wonderful in wonderful krishna, ways wonderful ways i think i'm hearing my voice again back here yes okay thank you after uh, that's okay yes thank you geetaj so after you know krishna telling all those and after arjuna praising krishna acknowledging krishna as everything that you know you are present everywhere i'm 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 understanding that right that you are present everywhere but it is so difficult krishna it's only possible for you alone to understand you not for a normal person like me right in fact it so happened so me vivekananda himself vivekananda himself was done so much and so forth once who said it takes another vivekananda only to understand what this vivekananda has done it was his own statement it's not so easy for ordinary people to understand what this vivekananda have done so vivekananda himself swami vivekananda says that it takes another vivekananda to understand what this vivekananda have done if, if vivekananda says that what about krishna so arjuna says here that you only can understand the 15 shloka he says it's you only who can understand what you have done or what you are very difficult for a normal person for um, me to understand and therefore you need to give me a easy way how i can meditate upon you and understand you in a easy way so what are the different bhavanas keshu keshu cha bhaveshu chintyosi bhagavan maya what are the different ways in which i can meditate upon you and understand you and attain you and then ultimate goal of spirituality is attained by me he says that even though you say that you know uh, i am here i am that and all those things but i am not still satisfied this is a state of a devotee you know in the beginning he is atripta then narada says tripto you know tripto bhavati yam labdhva puman tripto bhavati amruto bhavati atma rama bhavati etc that's the para bhakti in the supreme state of bhakti but in the beginning sadhak sadhak in the sadhana bhakti a devotee will not get easily satisfied if you hear the glories of the lord if you hear bhagavatam the katha you are not satisfied you want to hear again and again my father used to you know make fun of me in the childhood he was not so devoted but i had heard the bhagavat sapta of my guru and after hearing once again next time i would see where is he doing i will run away there I would say what is this you are listening the same bhagavat katha he is telling the same thing why again you are going no i'm not satisfied hearing some once i want to hear more and more that's a de- de- state of a devotee once you hear you know somebody people would become addicted to that listen more and more the glories of the lord that's so now arjuna himself says that you know bhuya kadaya tritihi shunvato nasti me amritam i am not satisfied until i hear this amrita vachana of you more and more again o krishna tell me more of this vistarenaatmano yogam in a in a in a 
vistara in an elaborate way you have just simply said that you are present everywhere but do vistara they expand it tell me more about it when krishna and arjuna asks then again krishna starts telling from the 19th shloka shri bhagavan vacha where he says that there is no limit nasti antaha vistarasya me there is no end for my vistara because everything it right from a single self amoeba to this omnipresent sky that is there everywhere bhagavan is present isha vasam idagam sarvam yatkinje jagatyam jah but then for you to understand let me point a few aspects of mind because you are not able to appreciate this universal personality of me as such so he is going to bring him in the next chapter the vishwarupa again so before that before preparing him to that vishwarupa vishwarupa darshana yoga he is taking him through this vibhuti yoga where he says the first and foremost in fact he is listing around 70 such vibhutis i'll see if possible to list all those also so that we know why he has it has all been mentioned the time permits 70s if i remember exactly that he is mentioning the first and foremost glory is itself is that that he is present as the atma in each one of us aham atma i am the atma where sarva bhuda shayastitah aham adischa madhyam cha bhutanam anta evacha i am the beginning the middle and the end for all what is happening here what a beautiful statement that krishna is giving here that aham atma i am that potential divinity in each one of you the jivatma is me aham brahmasmi that's what the vedanta mahavakyam says right so this is where the first and foremost and giving this now you again understand wherever i am present now in that one shloka itself it's finished aham atma guda kesha here itself here krishna has finished answering the whole thing but then he goes on further to say where all in whatever form that he is established so the first and foremost he says aditya nam aham vishnu among the adityas i am vishnu what is this what is this aditya we all know in surya namaskara we say om aditya ya namaha in fact in surya namaskara itself we are using 12 names of surya because there are 12 adityas dvadasha aditya all this adityas are none other than the devatas they are all the sons of mother aditi and therefore aditya we say he saying aham vishnu hu among the sons of aditi i am vishnu how come vamana when bhagwan had taken the incarnation of vamana he was born as a son of aditi and kashyapa kashyap is from kashmir we have been talking of kashmir and that is where vamana was born as a son of aditi and so vamana avatara we know is the incarnation of vishnu hu so when krishna says here aditya na maham vishnu hu it is an indication of this upendra his brother of indra called vamana and also in the vishnu purana it is told that among the 12 adityas vishnu is also one of the names and jyotish jyotisham avir amshuman among all that which shines i am surya surya is very important in the parampara of yoga surya narayana because krishna himself tells in the fourth chapter that he gives the essence of the he has given the essence of this gita the yoga in the beginning of creation itself to be vaswan to surya so that shows here that the listener and the giver both are not different from each other krishna has been the teller of the gita the yoga gyana in the beginning of creation much before to arjuna in the beginning of creation krishna has narrated it to no him krishna himself and he is marichi marichi means you know one who again radiates divine radiance is a meaning that's why we have o marichaye namaha in the surya namaskara but here the word marichi refers to the maruts who are considered to be the sons of rudras in the veda who are embodiment of the wind again so among them i am the marichi and among nakshatras i am chandra here we cannot ask 
you know a biology a geographical question or an astrologic astronomical question in the modern context that why is he mentioning that among stars i am chandra because star, chandra is not a star it is just a satellite the moon is a satellite of the earth but a surya is a uh, sat is a star here krishna means that whatever that which is present in the night among that which is present in the night considering all those to be nakshatra that i am one among among that i am the chandra so both surya and chandra that's why we sing often right surya narayan chandra narayan surya narayan chandra narayan we sing in the bhajan so both surya and chandra both are the lord himself and he is saying among the vedas i am sama veda all those you have already heard from ketki ji so i don't want to elaborate but why the sama veda mainly because the word sama itself means shanti hi peace sama is shanti it is musical so among all though there are four vedas which are present he is choosing here the sama veda as the most embodied the most divine because of his musical uh, appeal because of the sama is giving peace and i am indra among the deva devas i am manas among the indriyas very important so indriyas we say there are five which are the uh, karmendriya and five gyanendriya five organs of action and five organs of cognition and all these are controlled by the mind mana pragraham eva chara katopanishad gives a beautiful analogy of the chariot the body being the chariot and the indriyas the 10 indriyas dasha indriyas are the horses one who wins over that indratha is dasharatha and so the pancha gyanendriya and pancha karmendriya are all controlled by mana pragraham eva cha mind is a control the lagam which controls the mana pragraham eva cha as krishna as the katopanishad yama says so krishna here says that among all the indriyas the control of indriyam is there in the mind therefore i am the mind there and among all in, in all the bhutas bhuta nasmi chetana i am the consciousness among all that which is living here then i am shankara in the rudras i am the kubhera among the yakshas i am uh, agni among the ashtavasus and then meru meru which is the equator i am that among the parvatas i am brihaspati the guru of the devatas among all the purohitas i am skanda subramanya you know the, the son of shivan parvati kartikeya who is an embodiment of valor i am among all the senapatis you know he is deva senadipati indra's commander in chief he was and so i am skanda among the senani and among all the you know uh, water bodies i am sagara the ocean goes on further to say about a few rishis he is mentioning we have to quickly take into account their names and their role mainly he is saying here that i am bhrugu among the maharishi he already spoke about brihaspati brihaspati is a deva guru who is the guru for all the celestial beings and here he is talking of brugu brugu and brahaspati are different but in a way they are all the same because all of them are manifestation of krishna so i am brugu among the maharishis and this brugu is a very important person in this yogic lore because he is one who had given us the panchakosha viveka the panchakosha comes from taittiriya upanishad where we see brugu varuna samvada in fact he is going to say i am varuna also so it is from brugu varuna samvad the conversation with brugu and varuna we have got this beautiful concept of the panchakosha which krishna has given, which uh, brugu has given and brugu is a very dear rishi this is panchakosha vivekan in childhood days he meditates and brings this panchakosha from taittri upanishad and later he goes to experiment who is the you know most supreme lord and he goes to stamp on even vishnu's uh, chest when he goes to vaikuntha and all so we see that among sapta rishi is a very bold dare rishi is brugu and among all the mantras that i am the ekakshari which is 
ओमकारा ओम इत्येकाक्षरम ब्रह्म सुप्रीम मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ डिविनिटी एज पतंजलि आल्सो इन द योग सूत्र से सस्य वाचक प्रणव प्रणव मंत्र इज ईश्वरा वाचक एंड दट शुड बी चैंटेड विद अटमोस्ट यू नो श्रद्धा एंड भावना एंड अमांग द जप आई एम जप यज्ञ अमांग ऑल द यज्ञ आई एम जप यज्ञ वी हैव वेरियस यज्ञ चंडी यज्ञ गणपति यज्ञ अश्वमेध यज्ञ लॉट ऑफ यज्ञ मेंशन इन द वैदिक स्क्रिप्चर्स among all those japa yagna we don't have to do anything very elaborate with external paraphernalia whatever simple that you have to the japa you don't have to even have for japa for japa you don't have to have even a japa mala with eyes closed or open looking at everything that is available as krishna hey krishna 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 rama 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 or shiva 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 this nama japa It need not be a heart mantra japa like Gayatri or Murtinjaya or something. It can be a simple nama japa. It should be. It could be beneficial a lot. There is a beautiful bhajan which says, "Nama japan kyo chodo diya? Nama japan kyo chodo diya? Jhoot na choda, krod na choda, satya bhajan kyo chodo diya?" नाम जपन क्यों छोड़ दिया यू हैव नॉट लेफ्ट योर यू नो जूट द लाइज एंड यू नो ऑल द फॉल्स हुड द क्रोध द एंगर एंड एवरीथिंग कीप इट ऑल विद यू डोंट हैव टू लीव एवरीथिंग बट जस्ट ऐड दिस वन एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द नाम जपन एंड दिस नाम जपन बट वी व्हाट वी डू ऑफ द डिवाइन लॉर्ड इट्स लाइक द फायर व्हिच कैन बर्न वन बिट ऑफ फायर कैन बर्न द होल थिंग राइट सो इट्स लाइक दैट इट्स वन ड्रॉप ऑफ मेडिसिन व्हिच कैन क्योर अ लॉट that so bhagavan naam japa has a power to cure all these problems so yajna naam japa yajnosmi he says and among all that which is unmovable i mean the himalayas look at the himalayas even today for all of us in the yoga field himalayas are our dream land right when would we go to kedar when would we go to uttarakashi when would we go to the himalayas and meditate the kailash manasarovar we all are longing for that and that is the beautiful hill range of himalayas which again krishna is mentioning among the trees that ashwatha among devarshis i am the narada among gandharvas that he is uh, the chitraratha and again another great maharshi is mentioning that he is kapila among the siddha siddha sir one who is attained the jnana one who has attained one was one is trained to attain he is a mumukshu and one was attained is called a siddha the sadaka what becomes siddha when he is attained among them kapila kapila is again incarnation of vishnu who gave us a sankhya yoga so he is mentioning about him also so everything see krishna has not spared every one thing even among trees he is saying i am ashwatha among the horses i am uchaishravas or among the birds i am the garuda i am the snakes i am vasuki right so among the man among the human naranam cha naradipam So this is when I read, I feel you know, don't feel I am bringing politics. And Krishna is saying, Naranam cha Naradipam. Among the humans, I am the leader of the humans, Naradipam. But the word also matches with Narendra Modi. So Naranam cha Naradipam, very nicely Krishna says here. And among all the ayudas, among all the weapons, it's Vajra. Swami Vivekananda says that we should have Vajra is thunderbolt. I want men who have the mind of the thunderbolt. very strong enough is what vivekananda says again kamadenu the gomata again the cupid he is krishna is not leaving anything but even the kamadeva one who puts you into the infatuations of life and one the rishis and munis who brings you out of that both is telling you right that's how he told slowly brings he even that he is telling that i am mrityu i am yama among the controllers i am the kala right if at one side he is prahlada the de- devoted child he says i am the kala i am the simha among all animals he keeps on going you know to make the long list uh, shorts he is saying that all those and one thing that we need to see here that vidyanam adhyatma vidyaham among all the education among all that which is to be learned i am the education of the self by knowing that which everything else is known attaining that which everything else is known attained 
So this Atma Vidya, Adhyatma Vidya Vidya Naam is a beautiful statement again. In fact, this uh, yoga place from where I am operating from is itself is called Adhyatma Yoga, Adhyatma Vidya Gurukul Viran. Because of this affirmation, Krishna is giving Adhyatma Vidya Vidya Naam. Even I am the Vada, when some two people argues, don't think it's bad. Out of which some good thing can happen. So Vada should not be Jalpa or Vada should not be Vidanda. Vada can be Samvada. A, a positive argument is always welcome. Krishna himself had got many arguments, many Vadas between Krishna and Rukmini we see in the Bhagavatam. Even Krishna and Arjuna, what is happening itself is a Samvada, right? Krishna Arjuna Samvade Bhagavad Gita, every shloka, every ch chapter ends by saying, Shri Krishna Arjuna Samvade. So it could be Samvada, but not Vitanda Vada, not Jalpa Vada. It could be Samvada. So I am the Vada, even among the people who argue, I am that argument. You know, you, you cannot exclude anything from there among the letters. I am the Akara and all. He keeps on going and then he says, you know, that among the games, I am the games of the dice. Yutam Chalayata Masmi. You know, in fact, now the whole Mahabharata war, the fate of Arjuna has happened because of this Yuta, because of this dice game that they played. And Krishna is saying, even I am that. So we should be able to appreciate the divinity in everything. You know, we have a beautiful shloka in the Devi Mahatmyam, where we say, Ya Devi Sarvabhudeshu Shakti Rupena Samstita. Namasta se, namasta se, namo namaha. We can understand this Shakti Rupena, mother is present everywhere. That's fine. But the next shloka goes to say, Ya Devi Sarva Bhudeshu Branti Rupena Samstita. That, that illusion is also me. That the Devi herself is the illusion also. Ya Devi Sarva Bhudeshu Nidra Rupena Samstita. Nidra is considered to be a Chitta Vritti. In Patanjali Yoga Sutra, he says, Vrittayaha, Panchatayaha, Krishta, Krishtaha. Pramana Vipariya Vikalpa uh, Nidra Smriti. So Nidra is uh, Chitta Vritti and a modification of the mind which we have to come out. Chitta Vritti Nirodaha is Yoga. But the Chitta Vritti is also God. That's what we need to understand. That Nidra Rupena, even Smriti Rupena Samsita is all has been told in the Devi Mahatmyam. So he goes on to say that he, I am not only, look at, he is saying I am Sattva. Among people who are Sattva Guna, but Yuta is a, is a Rajoguna Pravarti activity. I am that also. Right? And he has told in the beginning, I am Brihaspati among the Prohits. Now he is saying, Kavinam Ushanaha Ushana I am. Among all the Kavis, I am Ushana. This Ushana is Shukracharya who is Asura Guru. So Brihaspati is Deva Guru, Ushanaha Shukracharya is the Asura Guru. Both are that I am. So by telling all those, he's slowly bringing to a samatvata. And also, when punishment is given, punishment is given for the rectification and making somebody to be in the proper aspect, right? So we know that we have, we say, dandam dashagunam. Sama, dana, veda, danda. Among all those, I am dando, dameyatasmi. Among all the you know, punishments, I am the punishment itself. So keep on. And then among all the secrets, I am maunam. That's very important. If you have to keep secrets, you should maintain mauna, silence. You know, and then I am the jnana, which jnanis are having, which the divine people are having. He goes on to say all those. And finally, he says that there is no limit for all these vibhudis that I have. It's limitless. In the beginning also with this, Introduction, he started now coming to this conclusion. Krishna says it's limitless because everywhere in each one of us, there is something good or something bad. Both are that Paramatma's grace, which is happening, right? Saying this, he says that if you take one aspect of it, yet yet vibhudi matsatvam, shima durjida meva va, tatta deva vagachatvam, mama tejomsha sambhavam. It's all happening because of one, it's not the big thing. It's one aspect of the Lord which is making manifest in the form of this vibhuti, the glory that you see here. So, so you don't have to worry taking all those. I have presented you that I am present in all those. 
you don't have to go into all those in then do you take one aspect then one aspect of it and then you dwell upon it you you devote upon it you can attain my glories through that you can attain that equanimity of mind through that you can attain that buddhi yoga because of that you can attain that you know samatva chitta because of that take one and then apply the same that i am everywhere take one you know when you see that's where you know what happens now our problem with this we used we have a beautiful song in kannada i don't know how many of you can understand kannada uh, i'm um, i am seeing more from probably maharashtra more kars <laughs> and dars inamdar or damankar uh, or gokale and all more of probably from maharashtra few are karnataka i think samitra ma or uh, geeta and all are there so you can see that in kannada we sing a song enta bhakti ninadu o manuja enta bhakti ninadu what kind of devotion that you have why what happened ganapa ganapa ennuttiri ganapana pooje maaduttiri nijavada ganapana bandre aane bandandodutiri enta bhakti ninadu you are saying ganapati and then flowing you know but maharashtra also we do ganapati bappa moreya and then you are putting flowers and doing worship but when elephant comes in front of you oh elephant you are running away right we we say you know hanuma hanuma ennuttiri hanumana pooje maaduttiri we say hanuman but when a, when a, when a vanara comes in front of you you are chasing it out what kind of devotion that you have so we should be able to appreciate the presence of divinity everywhere in all the time so krishna by giving a few samples for sadhana these are tools for our elevation so when it's not just only in kamadenu that is he is there every cow has this divinity in it and not that only cow alone have it even a buffalo has it gnaneshwar maharaj in maharashtra in alandi you know in uh, when he went to baitanpur he proved that even in a buffalo the divinity is there pandranga is there he made a buffalo to speak the vedas so mahatma see in everything and everywhere eknath maharaj saw divinity even in a donkey a gada so it's not just alone in the cow alone bhagwan is there even a donkey he is there no big problem for us whenever you know you get up in the morning and walk around or you are going to your office because a fellow astrologer or a old uh, <clears throat> granny has told if a if a cat crosses across then it is apashaguna whereas in the cat also who is there bhagwan is only there look at that as an auspicious thing that bhagwan has crossed across and blessed me why don't you see that bhagwan in the cat also right but then same time when a rat comes and troubles your house don't think aha today rat bhagwan has come here ramakrishna paramahamsa tells that use practical applicable vedanta anushthana vedanta that's what swami ji also insisted swami vekananda he says yeah bhagwan is present everywhere no doubt right but you should be careful in certain things and applying this proper knowledge by telling the story i would conclude he says once it so happened in a gurukula the guruji had told that bhagwan is present everywhere isha vasam idagam sarvam yakinja jagatyam jagat yes guruji the student understood very well and he walks around you know people who know uh, say in bangalore we had the sv asa that is where guruji has told this knowledge and then the student walks out of prashanti kutiram and comes in bandargatta road he is coming and there is a bandargatta zoo there is a big commotion big noise happening people are running here and there what has happened an elephant had got mad and it came out of the zoo and now the people are telling the mahut the control of the elephant is telling come on run away don't be here the elephant is mad it's going to kick you out but now this intelligent devoted humble devotee subbu went towards this elephant o oh, gajanan o oh, gajendra o oh, ganapati i bow down to you makes a humble pranam and then this elephant kicks him up and then he is thrown back to prashanti to the ashram there i went to guruji and said guruji what is this you told bhagwan is there everywhere you should appreciate right and this elephant bhagwan kicked me now what is this then guruji says my dear no doubt that bhagwan is there in elephant but that same bhagwan is there in that mahut also who told you don't go near this elephant it is mad it is going to kick you so why didn't you see this now where to see what 
right krishna says i am the dyuta the you know player like the game of the dice i am that but then when you have to play that how to play or how not to get cheated that intelligence what is there within you that is what we need to bring then so according to the situation we need to bring this divine manifestation excellence and appreciate and apply that is what krishna is teaching us in this whole uh, vibhuti yoga yet yet vibhuti mat satvam wherever you see whatever good don't hesitate to appreciate the first and foremost thing we should have let it be in somebody whom we don't like also but there is something good that they have done right let us appreciate if somebody is coming and telling us something let us not ignore it if there is some satva in it some good thing let us try to take it in tamil tiruvalluvar says எப்பொருள் யார் யார் வாய் கேட்பினும் அப்பொருள் மெய்பொருள் காண்பதறிவு எனிபடி மே கம் அண்ட் டெல் எனி திங் டோன்ட் இக்னோர் ஈவன் சைல்ட் கேன் டீச் யூ அ லெசன் பட் வித் ஆல் ஹார்னஸ் டு பிரணாம் அண்ட் லேர்ன் தட் சோ தட்ஸ் சோ வித் ஓபன் மைண்ட் वी शुड बी சோ ஹியர் விபூதி யோகா எக்ஸ்பாண்ட்ஸ் आवर மைண்ட் not being so narrow expands our cognition expands our knowledge expands our life expands our consciousness and prepares us to see that isha was samidagam sarvam everywhere so maybe also by the blessings of yogeshwara shri krishna try to see not just in these these are the 70 samples but the whole vibhuti of bhagavan is right in front of us i am seeing the vibhuti in the computer the laptop which is bringing people from far and wide and making us to you know connect so this is self is a vibhuti i who is telling you something maybe if there is some good in me that is the vibhuti that you can see from me i am seeing the patience in you all you know probably from different places you got connected in 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 uk i do not know what time it is so from different places from different time you are forbearing you are with patience listening to me this itself is a good guna i am seeing in you that is the vibhuti in you so like this mutually we have to appreciate the goodness in everybody and then life can become more peaceful more purposeful more useful so with this thought let us just contemplate for a while with the meditation and then maybe if you have any few questions we can interact for a while and conclude with eyes closed one omkara Oh. Just try to think of one good quality that you are so unique at. Each one of each one of us have been gifted with unique qualities. just think of one good quality of your own that you would be very happy about being possessing that just think of it it could be your helping nature it could be your loving behavior it could be the truthfulness the steadfastness that you have to be the courage that you have the confidence that you have whatever that you feel that i am most good at this one particular aspect act one incident or an episode in your life where by using this one particular unique quality of yours that you could help somebody unknown and bring a change in them or just an influence in them you help them when they were in really need just try to recollect that one moment in your life where by using this unique quality of you that you help someone where they were so thankful for you to be just giving a seat in the bus for an unknown person elderly person giving somebody just a drop of water or feeding someone or helping a blind to cross across the road in whatever way that we did helping someone to find the place which they were not knowing in whatever limited way in which you could do just pick collect one good thing that you did by using this one unique quality of yours or you made somebody so depressed by 
making them smile and laugh by just making fun with them sharing counseling somebody or giving a good hearing to someone who was in distress in whatever way this one aspect of that good thing with which you could influence and help someone think that it is krishna bhagwan who was in you who made it happen it's not you it's he who made it happen na ham karta hari karta it's bhagwan who made it to happen again now think of a time when you were really in difficulty you were in need of some rescue some help and from somehow somewhere help came to you to be a delayed help but not a denied help a help came to you just think of that it could be from your own immediate next person or from some unknown person who came and just helped you and then went away i'm sure that each one of us have been influenced by such support and help in our lives just think of that one good thing which happened and let's appreciate that good thing which happened the good goodness which came from such good person to make an influence to help you in right time in right need right place the right situation or think of one person whom you hate the most it could be your own partner your friend or somebody whom you have cut a relationship with but then even today if you have that enmity that hatredness just think of that person or that situation which you want to forget and look at something good in that also there is something good from that person that situation also probably a lesson for me to learn not to repeat it again let me take that lesson there is a lesson for me to learn from each and every situation every person that i come across every encounter that i make just think of that let's try to retain this bhavana this attitude of looking the goodness in everything that we come across whenever we see anything excellent to be performed let's have that openness to appreciate and look at the divine being there may shri krishna guide us to have this vibhuti yoga applied in our day to day life in each and every moment shanti mantra Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Krishna Pranamastu Gently rub your palms. Your palms to your eyes. Open your eyes and look into your palm. this itself is a vibhuti that you can see the divine manifestation in your own hand not elsewhere divinity dwells in us so thank you for your patient hearing and i i'm i'm sure i have taken a little more time kepti ji i told me 40 minutes of we can speak and then we can have 15 minutes interaction it's already i think uh, 50 uh, more than i'm almost 60 minutes that i have taken to speak if you have any questions except that when would you stop <laughs> Yeah, no way it was uh, excellent and especially the last meditation what we have done which uh, i think given us a completely different perspective that even that good quality we sometimes you know feel proud of ourselves but then tell yourself that you know that is uh, krishna's vibhuti and it's not yours so it will keep you always grounded and uh, excellent means thoroughly enjoyed your entire talk and as you have said it 
what is a good sign of a devotee is to you know go through it again and again listen to it again and again and even spite of going through all the shlokas beforehand again to listen to these vibhutis through you extremely good experience so we will just ask uh, our other participants how they have felt uh, you can share yeah. your experience as Actually, well I have speak because of each of this uh, each one vibhuti i would speak for an hour usually yeah. <laughs> can tell stories and the various connections okay. narratives so i had to um, restrict i had in you know so the the topic is always vast but we have to limit ourselves in the you know time which is available so any one of you if you want to like share your experience uh, about today's session or if you have any question uh, you can unmute yourself and share or ask whatever you have in your mind if no question you can at least share uh, you know your experience of today's meditation or the entire talk thank you very much sir you have explained with you very excellently and the what i have understood is that we have to do the atma parikshan and we have to see what good qualities we have and how to apply it to the others and even from the others we have to just see nirakshira vivek buddhi that is whatever is good that you have to take out even from the enemy also you can have the good qualities and you can notice them that is what i have understood so it was very excellent that i could understand vibhuti yog very nicely thank you very much <laughs> that's great in fact often it happens with many of us that you know different kinds of personalities where one personality is like you know what to see you know, i am good at this i am that so they are very highly appreciable of what they do and then they seldom see the goodness in others mm. and there's somebody who feels so inferior among them who you are so great at that he is so good at that i am nothing so this is an again you know two extreme so mm. we would have to bring a balance between these two that there is something good in me and good in you also so both should be simultaneously we should be able to approach true ah <laughs> uh, anyone else so if there are no any further questions um uh, thank you so much thank you so much As okay <laughs> yes penny yeah Yeah. You have to say something. All right. So I will take this last few minutes to uh offer our gratitude and thank you so much Subhu bhaiya that you have given your time, valuable time and shared uh your perspective, your thoughts on vibhuti yoga. So we all are thankful to you and I hope in future uh, again if if you know possible with divine grace <laughs> uh we would like to listen to you again so thank you everyone for joining in today's session and uh, i will keep you updated from next month we will start with the ninth chapter of bhagavad gita but i will put all the details on our whatsapp group so thank you so much and have a good day yes, thank you bhaiya Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to rethink of all those divine glories. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Thank, Thank you. So you. Much. Yeah. Thank you. I take leave. Namaste. Yeah. Thank you.